Do you ever wish you could have a life do-over, similar to a makeover or a house renovation? A chance to try something again with a different result? Try Again with Monique is a place where I will give you my take and also hear from you regarding the questions and challenges we all face in life. You will either be inspired to try life again, over and over again, or make some really good lemonade from those sour lemons. Either way, I got you. If at first you don't succeed, try again with Monique. So today I am speaking with Maria Morbido, a highly trained speech pathologist who currently pastors a church, but she also teaches and runs a private Christian school in Niagara Falls, New York. My eldest son, who is now 17, which I still cannot believe, uh, attended her school from kindergarten to first grade, and he really thrived while there. Thank you, Maria, for chatting with me today. How are you? Oh, you're welcome. Thank you, Monique, for having me on. I'm doing great. How are you doing? I'm doing good. Doing good now that I'm speaking with you. So yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, my, my intention with, with really every podcast of Try Again with Monique is to really get people to sort of, you know, rethink or in some cases recreate their lives, especially if they don't like how things turned out the first time. Hence the yeah. name, you know, Try Again. <laughs> That's where the name comes from. Um, so the, the subject for today is, is personal success. And I want to know from you how you define it and how you've successfully, you know, made different transitions in your life. Um, and my first question in, in, in that vein is, um, you know, tell us about a moment in your life or your career in which you, you know, had an opportunity to recreate yourself or, you know, to try something new or different. Talk to us about that transition. Okay. So, you know, my career started off in speech pathology, as you know. Yes. And that was just my focus. And I figured that was what I was doing for life. <laughs> there was going to be no changes in that. Mm-hmm. And the Lord put on our heart, uh, when I say ours, it was mine and my sister's, who was Pastor Linda, um, and to start a school, a Christian school. And so with that being said, um, I said yes to God, but not really knowing what I was getting into, um, you know, and just really kind of going into this blind, basically. Mm -hmm. So just having to be 100% dependent on the Lord, really, to pray and seek his face to see what what does this mean, start a school? We didn't know what we were doing at all. And so... Um, we just started doing research and going online and, uh, you know, looking things up, how to start a school. I know it sounds silly, but that's what we did. Sure. And how to start a private Christian school and started looking. I know, and I really was trying to figure out what would I even do with this? Like, how would you, how would you teach kids? How do you get the kids? What, you know, what do you do? And so, um, I almost had to basically leave my, um, job as a speech pathologist. We're getting some echo here. Um, but anyways, so I, going back to um, the switch over for me from speech pathology, and, and let you know, I was still doing my speech pathology work, my speech therapy cases, in addition to the school once we started. Okay. And so, um, you know, it's just a point of not... I was very afraid, and I think that's what people have to understand. Sometimes you're making a shift or a change in your life, and you're afraid because it's new and it's unknown, but you take that chance. Sure, sure. You do it, you do it afraid. Absolutely. And, and it's okay because, you know, I think, you know, God will really give you the grace, and I ask him for it every single day, um, you know, to just meet you where you're at and to try to figure out what's what's really best and how to do things. So it was really a step of faith in our situation with the school, um, you know, to, to get that started, not knowing what to do, but really just seeing things all along the way. And it was so great because people were sent to me all the way through, you know, yeah. that's how I met you and your husband and we yes. had your son. And, and Absolutely. so, it, you know, all these doors were just opening to meet different people. And, 
and they had these expertise areas, you know, like your husband with technology that I didn't have, you know. Sure, sure. Um, so, you know, I think you take the chance, you do your research, you pray a lot, and, um, and trust that things will work. And, you know, Monique, the thing is, if something fails, you do it again. Absolutely. Absolutely. You learn, you learn from your failures and you just tweak things, you know. I'm a firm believer of that. So you, you really, that, that's so interesting to me. You went from speech pathology to really starting a, a, a school. I mean, that's yeah. not a small undertaking. Uh, and, and, you know, ha- having to do research. My next question was going to be, what did you learn from that experience? Uh, but some of the things you've already shared really are, you know, do your research. Um, yeah. You know, um, at, trust the process once you've done your research because you're, you're armed at that point with knowledge and information. Uh, so trust the process. And I love that you said do it afraid. I actually did a podcast on that not too long ago um, that life is not always going to um, all the, you know, the the ducks aren't going to always be in a row. Sometimes you just have to, as you said, trust the process and and do it afraid um, because the fear is not always going to leave. Um, you know, I think when you right. try anything big or anything new, you know, fear, there's going to be a little bit of nervousness, anxiety, possibly, and, and a little bit of fear attached to it. And you just have to sort of work through that, uh, especially in your case, because as you said, that was something God called you to do. So you knew you had to go forward um, and, and do it. So you had to trust the process after doing your research and doing it afraid. I love that. Is there anything else that you learned from that experience? Oh, I've learned so much from this experience (laughs) over the years. Um, You know, each year we come up with some challenge that we haven't had. And, you know, I always say, I don't think there's anything else we could learn here. But every single year there has been something different that we've had to learn from. And I think that is a huge thing. If I were to encourage anybody that's going to try something new and and have a complete shift in their life, um, you know, and I wasn't in my 20s either when this happened. So um, age, age can't be a factor. You have to just always know that you have to continue on and you have to just keep plowing through. And so each year we learned something new. You know, it, it sounds crazy, but there's always challenges. So, you know, um, whether it was something, learning something new with how to handle, you know, parents or parental situations or student situations or financial situations or whatever, um, teachers, you know, you're just, you're learning as you go along. And I had mentorship and I had someone speak into my life to say, um, and this was pivotal, pivotal for me. They said to me, do you know why most schools fail? And I said, no. I said, well, do they grow too fast? And he said, yes. He said, they grow too fast and they can't handle the growth. Okay. Interesting. So, mm-hmm. And you know, in the Bible where it tells us don't despise small beginnings. Yes, Absolutely. That is critical for any business because you have to trust. Sometimes if the growth is there immediately, you don't know how to handle that growth because you're going to make mistakes along the way and there's going to be obstacles. So smaller is actually better so that you can learn in a controlled environment. So controlled growth is a very good thing. That's one pivotal, pivotal lesson that I have learned. I love that controlled growth. I think that mm-hmm. is a great nugget, takeaway nugget for all of us. Um, it can be, be applied to so many things in life. Absolutely. Are you willing are, are you willing to talk a little bit about, um, I, I know you talked about making that transition from speech pathology, uh, you know, to starting a new school. You really were doing both at the same time. Mm-hmm. Uh, but then you made another transition. Um, yes. Once your school was, you know, running and, uh, you know, operating, uh, you made another transition. You, uh, can you talk a little bit about that? I can. I made a transition with having to be a senior pastor of a church yes. after after the loss of my sister. Um, it, it was a it, talk, talk about a transition. Um, it was a transition that I didn't want. It was a transition that I really kind of fought a little bit. Um, she had left in her will to leave everything to her beloved sister and she meant everything. Um, so 
it was a, a very difficult situation. And, you know, Monique, the only way that I could wrap my head around it, was she was such a significant loss for me. She was my sister, my pastor, my best friend, my mentor. Um, just She was like a mother to me often. Um, and the only thing I could really wrap my head around it with after a few months of, you know, the grieving process and uh, actually I want to say <laughs> few years of the grieving process because sure. it's been difficult. Sure. Um, so the only thing that I could wrap around m- my head around it was the fact that if my sister had had children, she would have left them to me to, okay. to be in my care. And I looked at this congregation and I love them. I'm part of the congregation. I was a part of this. They, you know, they're my church family. And I looked at them and I thought, well, this is her child. These are her children. Interesting point of view. Yes. And she left them in my care. And so, um, you know, to honor my sister and to honor her legacy and her calling, I really pressed in. And, you know, I wanted to make sure, you know, Lord, is this what you want me to do? Because I don't want to take on something that... Because it, it's a calling. Um, sure. I don't want to take on something that I am not equipped for. And, you know, I was supported by so many pastors and apostles um, getting me through. You know, I'm going to tell you something. I, years ago, you spoke something to me. And you said, good leaders are followers at one point. They're good followers. Wow. And I, that never left me. And after my sister passed away, Monique, you said something else to me. You gave me something that was to be strong and very courageous. And I don't know. You didn't know that I was taking over the church. No. I I didn't know I was taking over the church. And so um, those nuggets and and the other things that people spoke to me. Yes. um, you know, another takeaway is, you know, yes, you step into things that you're afraid of and you're going to have fear, you're going to have anxiety, that's all natural. But the other thing you have to know is God provides. And I have to be a hundred percent dependent on Him and His leadings and His promptings. Because if I try to do it on my own, I'm going to fail. I hear so you. Yes. I need to be dependent on our Lord and I need to be dependent on his leadings and his guidings. When he tells me go, I go. When he tells me stop, I stop. Um, and it's just that obedience. It's it's trying to be obedient to my father, to my heavenly father. And, um, and that's my heart and that's where I'm at. And so I wouldn't be able to transition to anything. I wouldn't have been able to definitely transition to this um, sure. alone because, you know, with the school, I had my sister. Right. You know, right. To, to lean on and to kind of, you know, and she always said to me, Maria, you have to go to the throne room of grace. You have to go to the father. You have to be dependent on him because someday I might not be here. And, uh, and, and here we are. And so I have to always seek the father's face. Every morning I start off in prayer, in devotional, in, you know, in his presence to seek his face because I, I, on my own, I will make a lot of mistakes and I can do a lot of damage, you know, and and these, these are, these are people, these are, it's important, you know, to him. Lives are dependent upon your obedience and, and, and and, yeah, absolutely. And you're fulfilling your purpose really too. Um, you know, I'm thinking so many scriptures were, uh, you know, coming to my mind as you were speaking, you know, one of. The, the, the main ones is, you know, with God, all things are possible. Your strength yes. came from, 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 from heaven. You know, it came from another place, uh, yes. you know, otherworldly, if you will, you know, yes. it, you know, you, you, you relied upon that connection, uh, to, to help you to do the thing that you weren't sure you could do. And, yes. and, and yet here you are doing it, um, along with your school because your school yes. has not closed down. No. Um, and I don't believe you've stopped doing speech pathology. Am I correct? I retired last year, a year and a half ago. I re- actually officially retired. Oh, you officially retired. Got I did. it. Okay. I did. Okay. Now, well, 
I have kept my, you know, my, I have a New York State license for speech pathology. I have my uh, certification. I am keeping that going just because you never know down the line in the future what, what God has for me. Sure. Um, but, you know, the other thing I want to say, too, and it's kind of going back to like a key nugget. You know, Monique, people, when they're trying something new or even when they've been doing something for a few years, you know, we've been in the school 13 years. And... um The thing that people have to be very resolute about, and I've struggled with this, but you cannot listen to the negativity of other people. Naysayers. The naysayers. When you have something that you know, that you know is from God, and it's something he wants you to do. Because, you know, you lay things on the altar. You know, I will put the school on the altar. I will put the church on the altar and say, Father, this is yours. This is your school. This is your church. What do you want me to do? Do, You know, do you want me to keep this going? Do you want me to shut it down? What do you want me to do? And he will always send something to me to to show me, keep it going. And, you know. Like a ram in the bush. It's a ram in the bush. Yes. It's a ram in the bush. Like, you know, you're going to shut down and then someone will say, you know, you preach that message. You'll run into someone in a restaurant and they'll say, you, you, I listen to you. And you're like, you do? (laughs) You know, I go, oh, you do? You listen to me? And, um, and they'll say, you're encouraging me. Please keep going. Yeah. It's amazing the impact that we don't realize we have on others' lives. You know, we're so interconnected. And and sometimes we don't realize that what you say and what you do, especially, I believe, when you're walking in purpose, really, really affects other people. Yeah. Um, Even when you're completely unaware. Um, That is so interesting. Yes. Well, I wanted to ask you, um, you, you've given us some really great nuggets uh, to go forward with and and, and some great takeaways. You know, I... I'm going to ask you how you define success. I define success. Um, you know, for me, it's, it's, it's kind of a simplistic, um, uh, definition. And, and really it's, you're successful in my opinion when you know what you you've put on, been put on earth to do mm-hmm. and you go about doing it. You're, you're literally fulfilling your purpose. To me, yes. that is success. Some would define it as, you know, materially or in some other ways. I define it as f- knowing what God put you here to do and going about doing it. Um, I think that is the d- full definition of success. Well, how do you define su- success? Well, I wholeheartedly agree with that. You know, um, when you find your purpose, and everybody has a purpose. Everyone was created with a purpose. I and agree. you have to seek it out. And when you find that purpose, you feel peace. You know, there's an inner peace that you have. Yes. That even if the whole world around you, which we just went through with the pandemic, is kind of falling apart, uh, it gets to the point where you can't even put the news on anymore. But so true. Every, everything around you is falling apart. But in the middle of that, you have peace. I absolutely agree with that. And to me, success is... You know, I I also have a simplistic view of it, you know, finding your purpose. But see, to success for me is knowing that you're serving other people, helping other people. I think success is reaching out and talking to someone who maybe just needs an encouraging word. Success is when you look at your children's faces and they're smiling and they're laughing with you. Um... Success is when you're not so busy or even how busy you get in this crazy world. You know, you have time to have meal time with your family and they still want to eat with you. You know, my daughter's 22, my son is 18 and they still want to hang out with mom. I see that as success. I so agree with you. I love that. You know, my son is 17 and about mm-hmm. to be 18 in January, Aww. which is uh, still a shock to me. I'm yeah. still in sh- I'm walking around still in shock. <laughs> yes. Um, as I look at this kid who's now taller than me, um, and I'm not short, I'm 5'9", so he's taller than me, uh, and I'm just in shock, but I, I so love, uh, I-, I love the vivid descriptions you just gave, but I-, I do love the fact that he still wants to hang out with his mom at 17. Yeah. That just yeah. does something. For my heart, it, it really does. He still wants to talk to me. Still wants to hang out with me. Um, yeah, it's a good feeling. It's a good feeling. I, I I so agree with that. 
It is. And you know, success, you know, it, it's so many people, I think you're, you're right. They look at it as a monetary thing and, and you can be successful. I think God has nothing wrong with prosperity. He wants us to prosper in all things. Absolutely. Even as our soul prospers. So, you know, the thing, success to me is, you know, do you feel that you're accomplishing something? And it doesn't have to be monetary. It could be, you know, did you, did, did someone need a hug today? Did a smile, a smile. Yes. yes. Um, you know, success is just feeling of just a, an inner peace and a joy yeah. that you have. And I agree that when you, when you are, are I think when you're generous, um, not just, you know, with financial, but when you're generous with your spirit, with your time, with your, mm -hmm. you know, when you're just generous, I think that, um, you know, there is a peace that comes from that as well. And that is a level of success when you're just, it brings you peace to make other people happy or to do something that makes somebody's day, you know, something yes. like we were saying, as simple as a smile, lending a helping hand wherever, you know, it, it's, it's needed. Um, I, I, I being, being generous of spirit, I think makes a difference as well. Um, so Maria, do you consider yourself successful? Why or why not? <laughs> um, I do. I really do. I, I don't have, I guess, everything that I would like to have. I don't have, um, you know, I'm not exactly where I would like to be. You know, the school is not as large as I thought it would be at this point. Um, however, I do feel that it's successful. And I measure things by growth of other people. So, you know, if I see people around me doing well because of something that I'm doing, then I feel that that's success successful. That's also to say, too, if things aren't, you don't have to feel bad about it or bad about yourself. All you have to do is say, what do I need to do to change this to make it a successful situation? Be flexible. Be flexible. Sure. Absolutely. Absolutely. I and willing and willing to change. You know, you know, if something is happening, for example, in the school, um, you know, the, the growth wasn't as successful as it could have been. Well, why? What didn't I do? What could I have done differently? And I think it's always being willing to learn, to keep learning. You have to be teachable. Right. Always being a student of life. Yes. Yeah. I, I agree with that. I agree with that. You have given us some great nuggets. Um, I, I just want to kind of recap some of the things. I was jotting some things down. You said so many great things. I, I had to start writing. Um, so when trying something new, this is what I'm, I'm getting from you. And, 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 and I think those that are listening can really, really take this away and, and be successful in their own lives. Uh, because I think what a lot of what you said, most of what you said really applies to just about any situation. You know, so when trying something new, I wrote down what you said. Do your research. You know, and then once you've done the research and you've armed yourself with the information, trust the process, you mm -hmm. know, um, and don't be, um, you know, do it afraid if that's what you have to do to work through that process, you know, depend on God. And, 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 and you and I also talked about, you know, know your purpose and, you know, depend on that purpose too, as well, you know, trust that purpose that God has given you to do it. So do it afraid, move forward through it with that research, uh, and trusting the process. Don't listen to naysayers. Yes. Um, it's something else you said that I think is really, really key because they can take you off, off your path of your purpose. Yes. Uh, and, and you don't want that to happen. And then, and while you're pursuing your purpose and you're trusting the process and you're trying all these things to get to where you're trying to go, you have to be flexible. You have to be teachable and you have to be willing to change direction and change course if, if that's what it takes um, to, to move forward. Um, and I think that, did I leave anything out? No, I think you covered it all. <laughs> okay, that because that was that was just. I mean, you really you, you you hit us with a lot of great nuggets, and I I just love that. Um, so I'm just we're gonna wrap it up a little bit. Um, okay. and I just want to um give you an opportunity, if if you want to tell people how they can get in touch with you, if they want to say attend your church, or if you know and see you in that pastoral role, or if they want to learn more about your school, how can how can they how can they connect with you? Absolutely. So they can connect with me via uh, my telephone number is the easiest. I get texts all the time uh, or they can leave me a voicemail. So my phone number is area code 716-553-6318. And yes, I use that phone for the school, the church. Um, I'm versatile with that. Um, I also have an email um, and my personal email is the easiest for uh 
really any connection, but that's my last name of M-O-R-A-B-I-T-O-2 at verizon.net. The school, I can be reached at director Maria Morabito at gmail.com. Um, so that is also another way, and it's just spelled director Maria Morabito. So all one word at gmail.com. Um, I'm also on Facebook. Great. Christ the King is on, Christ the King Preparatory Academy is on Facebook. Um, in His Presence Church is 704 91st Street in Niagara Falls, New York. We're off of Cayuga Drive. Uh, we're right around the corner from Dee Dee's Ice Cream Shop. That's the easiest way for people to find us. Um, okay. But, you know, we have services on Sunday at 1030 a.m. And, you know, we're a small congregation, but it's full of love and great people. Uh, it, it was enough for me to stay and willing to serve my father for. Her. So, um, you know, I preach uh, life. I preach life. That's what my sister did. And that's what I have continued to do as well. And what I mean by that is, People need to know God is real, but then yes. how do how do I apply this to my life? Absolutely, um, real life problems, you know. And yeah. and we that's how that's how I roll. And our school, I love our school. You know, that's my passion and my yes, heart. Yes, yes. And our school still, you know, we use homeschool curriculums in a private school setting. We're not a homeschool, right. but we are private. And what we do is we just have stellar academics. Yeah. And we always have, and our students do extremely well. My son just got into um, all the colleges that he applied to. He got into with honors. Um, his SAT score was extremely high. Uh, awesome. And so, awesome. Yeah. So our kids just excel. No matter what level they're at, you know, they really just do very well. So they can reach out to me in all those modes. I'd love to talk to people. That would be great. Thank you so much for sharing that. Now I'm going to end with just one more question. Yes. And it's a, kind of a light one. Um, okay. So what is something that, uh, Maria, that you like or dislike that most people wouldn't know about you that you're willing to share publicly? Oh, boy. I, I love life. Okay. I love life. I love being around people that I call them my people. And, and once you're my, like, you're my, you're one of my people. You yes, and George, absolutely. you're my, you are my people. We're, um, we're, we're what I call lifers. <laughs> yes, we're lifers. <laughs> yes, absolutely. Some, something I don't like, I don't like cruelty in any way, shape, or form. Okay, okay. And it's something that's just, you know, dear to my heart. I just, I like kindness and I, I like love and mercy and, and just gentleness. I hate liver. Okay. I'll well, never eat liver. Well, that's something that people might not know about you. So there we have it. You don't there like you, liver. There you go. I don't like liver. And I don't like cruel people who eat liver. Well, there you put it all together. That yeah. sounds good to me. <laughs> Maria, thank you. This has been great. This has been great. You have really given us some nuggets to, to live by and to apply to our own lives as we try to achieve personal success, you know, in our own lives. Thank you so much for taking, taking the time with me today and for sharing those great nuggets with us about personal success. Thank you for taking the time to listen to Try Again with Monique. If you enjoyed today's episode, please take a moment to leave a review wherever you are listening. Please also remember to hit the subscribe button so you can be notified when new episodes are available. New episodes will be posted weekly. Please also like and follow us on Facebook. Try Again with Monique is a production of GM Associates released under Creative Common Attribution, non-commercial, no derivatives, 4.0 international license. Remember, if at first you don't succeed, try again with Monique.